and then we're good to go. Three, two. You kidding me? Braden McPhee in the studio. Give me a handshake. Awesome. That's a hell of a handshake. Yes. How are I you, know. sir? How are you? I'm great. I'm super pumped to be here today. How, super pumped. How was practice? It was good. Yeah? It was good. Yeah. No, we had a great little power play PK today, so it was nice. A little more relaxed than normal, but new coach. He's he's hard. What'd, he you, what'd you call him? Lordo? Lordo. Lordo's the name, so that's what we call him. How do you like uh, coming out of the rink and it's 30 degrees out? You like it or no? You just wish it was winter right now? No, I, I do. I don't mind it at all, uh, especially like an early day like today. We got the rest of the day to enjoy it. I know some of the boys might be heading to the beach after too, so it's nice that way. But sometimes you kind of wish it was golf season too. Like I kind of like I left the clubs at home. I'm like I can't get what. Yeah, I get distracted. I get too fired up to get golfing. So yeah, yeah. You so, left them at home. Yeah. Well, we had them for a training camp, and then I I got they're actually at one of my buddies. On the team. He's tears, but I like leave him there. Oh, I'm sorry to drag you to the studio here on a nice day. All the boys are at oh, the no. beach right now. It's no. my bad. No, I, I'm fired up for this. I'm okay, good say. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So how, uh, well, you know, you've been in Halifax for four years now. Pretty, you know, I guess you and Sid kind of have a little comparison here. He's been with one organization, his whole thing. you got one organization going with your junior career. What's the, I guess, what's the magic to making people want you around? I want you, I just met you and I want you to stay. Oh, what's what, what's, it, what's your magic? No, I just, I think it's just being nice to everyone. I think that was, I just enjoyed, obviously I was super fired up. When Halifax drafted me, I was like super pumped for that, obviously, right? But then, yeah, just being nice to everyone. And I think that's part of the reason I got my 20 spot as well. I mean, you can sometimes you can look at numbers and stuff like that, and you'd be like, oh, that's a 19, maybe not a 20, but sometimes when you're nice to everyone and then being a good guy helps the team in different ways. I thought you would have grown up hating the Mooseheads, right from Moncton. Well, a little bit, right? There's a little hatred, but then when you put yourself there, when it's like your draft and you're like, what's best for me? Halifax is the place to be, right? How so. do you think you would have done? Like if you're, if, you know, you know, some guys love playing in front of their home fans, their family and stuff like that. How, how do you like the distance? What is it? Two, two and a half hours from Moncton? Like, do you like being away? I do. Yeah. I think it's great to be like a little bit away. It's just a different kind of getting away from home. Sometimes you get, even in the summer, I get really comfortable at home. Do you know what I mean? You kind of get a little lazy sometimes like, oh, the parents will clean up the dishes and stuff. <laughs> when you're at the billets though, no, you, you got to dial in a little bit. So it's good. It's, it's been great. And my billets are fantastic they're the best we'll get to that let's yep. go let's go back to Moncton yep. and like the, the Flyers days mm. like you had a pretty successful minor hockey career I know that you won the championship here it says in 2020-21 but even before that it looked like you guys had a great group of guys coming out of the New Brunswick province maybe just talk about that experience and how it prepped you to move on to to major junior hockey 100 percent. yeah we've had some great players and even better coaches okay i think that's really where it starts um i know my bantam coaches they've been they were fantastic kind of preparing and i actually got cut my first year bantam so i played bantam minor my first year um which was probably the best thing for me um how so it is because i was wasn't a big guy at the time i was still not a big guy but Weight and stuff was really low, so minor was kind of smaller guys, and then I could really get the confidence going. And then my second year, Bantam had a successful year with that team, and then yeah, with the Flyers program and everything like that, they they really run it like a major junior team, which prepared me for Halifax. What what uh, what was the thing that you did to like stand your own? You're saying you're not a tall guy, but you definitely don't get pushed off the puck. What was that one thing, like maybe an, an adjustment that you made in the summer to like? have your, uh, I guess, core be a lot stronger to make sure no one's pushing you off the puck. Right. I, I do focus a lot on core. I think that's, like, the biggest part of everything. Like, every day I do some core circuit and everything like that. I think that's super important. And then just the mindset of I don't want anyone taking the puck from me. I think that's the biggest thing is, like, if you have the puck, I'm going to hit you as hard as I can to get it from you. And if I have it, you good luck getting it type thing. So then at what point were you like, okay, maybe I can play at a higher level? Because obviously the confidence comes, you know, week by week, month by month. It's different for everyone. Right. At what point in your minor career were you like, oh, okay, maybe I can compete at that level? It, like my, when I got cut, obviously I was devastated. But then I really got the confidence going and I could show that I could play offensively. And then my second year Bantam, that continued. I was kind of an offensive guy, power play. And then my first year Midget was when I was like, just made the team because Moncton's hard to make that team right that midget team's tough to make especially my first year I think all our decor went and played major junior after a lot of the guys up front too like we had some like Sam Savoy example he was a first year with me but we were the only two first year forwards on that team and stuff so like it was a tough team to make and then I was like all right I'm the fourth line guy and then John DeCourcy the head coach was like you're gonna be the PK guy 
So I'm like, okay, I got my role. I'm going to be that defensive forward and play that PK role. And then we had a tournament in Quebec, actually. So the Flyers always go up to this Quebec tournament. And I remember my first shift, one of the guys just did one of the nastiest moves I've ever seen. And I was like, if I want to make to the queue, I'm going to be I'm going to be a third, fourth line, just <laughs> grinder defensive guy. So, yeah. Yeah. Did, so. did someone give you that uh, that piece of advice? Because some guys don't get their advice that they go, okay, you're going to go to the junior level, but this is going to be your role. Some guys go to camp and they have the expectation of being, oh, I'm top six guy. No, don't even worry about it. But it seems like you had your lesson early. Like, oh, no, I know where I fit and I know where to excel. Like, who taught you that lesson? Right. I, I kind of, yeah, when I made that Flyers team, John DeCourcy really pushed it on me. Like, let's dial in defensively and that will lead to offense as you go. And then my 17 year, I got called up with Halifax for the last few months, but there was a 20 year old, Zach Beauregard is his name. And he was a smaller kind of just, he was, he was a nail gun. He was awesome. He uh, hit guys, was just super aggressive. And I was like, I want to play like him. I think I can play like him. And he was a 20. So he was moving on. So I'm like, that, I'm filling that role for the team. And I think that's, that's how it went. Right that, that, that was the Memorial Cup year, right? That was when Barron was there? Or was that the year after? That was the year after that. Okay, so, but still, well, like, that, that roster, the studs, like, Barron was there. Yeah, and then they had, yeah. Like, that year they had Desi, uh, LaRue. Dume. Dume, yeah. of course, right? So, yeah, they had some, they, they were younger at the time, right? But they had some good, some real good players to really look up to, oh my right? God, like, yeah. yeah, some studs for sure. And I saw that you had five games played that one year. What were those five games played? Like, well, being a sponge, what did you take in the most? Was it the way the guys prepared before the game, acted, the way they, I don't know, like, what, what were those five yeah. games? What do they mean to you? Oh, well, they were awesome. And I had five games, like, all before Christmas. COVID kind of totally wiped that out, too. So, um, yeah, just their preparation and on how prepared they were for the games and every face off. That was kind of my biggest thing that jumped out at me. I remember was they had to play for every face off, which we still do now, right? But that was kind of the first thing. I was like, they're so prepared, they're ready to make the plays before it even happens, right? So that was kind of the first thing. And then yeah, they're they're just great guys too. I was it was they were just super nice to me as a call up and stuff like that. I really felt like part of the team, so it was awesome. I remember when I got called up for the first game. It was at the Metro Center, and I was the fourth line, obviously, and, like, the third line's out there, and the whistle went there. They were out for, like, a minute and a half, so I was like, oh, fourth line, that's sick, we're up. So I don't even wait for coach to go, okay, fourth line, let's go. I just jump right out there thinking, I think it, uh, maybe it was Cam. I don't know who said go, but anyways, I jumped the gun hard. Anyways, we got sad again, then the first line went out, but I got my chance eventually, but I remember that first game, I was so excited just to get out there. Yeah. The first game, the Metro Center, man, it's a building, or sorry, not the Metro Center, Scotiabank Center. It's a building. Oh, you, it's... You, you're very fortunate to get to play in front of that crowd. It's insane. Yeah, super grateful for our fan base and everything. They're the best, right? 100%. Best of the league, so... Um, winning the championship uh, with the Moncton Flyers and then moving on to the Telus Cup. Telus Cup's like, we got to go see with the Max up in Thunder Bay and you see like the Ontario, Quebec and like the, some nasty, nasty players. Was that an eye-opening experience for you? Well, that wasn't my, that wasn't my year. Oh, was I it? I missed it. So I played Miramichi that year. Oh, so, it was the but you won the league championship. Or the league, that... that was my first year. Okay, your first year. Kind of too. Mm. Got wiped out with COVID. But we were the we were the favorite to win, so we we claim it Jeez. over Freddie. But and then we beat it, and then we won our second year as well. But we didn't have Atlantic, so we like both years. I never had the chance to go to Telus Cup. Oh, so both years, yeah, kind of we won it, but we never had the chance. My first year, especially, like we had a great team. It would have been really so nice. So you would have went. It's just well, you never know, right? Uh, uh, there were some great teams, but man, we had some we had some studs. So you were sure. you were in that area of guys kind of getting games played chopped down because of the vid. Like you, you, you were that did, man. The development that hurts. You were in that age. I was right in the yeah, right in the middle of that for sure. So what so. did you do to like make sure your development wasn't losing track? It was it was tough, um, and especially because like I, a lot of my buddies like their sleep schedules. I think everyone's <laughs> sleep schedules kind of turned to a mess. But I really tried to dial in as much as I could, especially on the weekdays. I was like, I'll have fun with my buddies on the weekend playing video games, or whatever. But weekdays, it was like, all right, we're getting to bed at a good time. We're waking up at a good time. And just getting our workouts in, the best you can do at home for that few weeks or whatever, right? I had a shoot in the garage and everything, so it was kind of just work with what you got, right? There's yeah. there's never an excuse. I'm never I'm not a guy who would ever come up with an excuse. It's like let's just work every day, get better every day, even if it's not ideal. Yeah. Did you do growing up? Did you play any other sports other than golf? Oh yeah, yeah. I I played I played baseball, soccer. I 
and middle school sports. I played every sport as well. So, um, but baseball is kind of my second sport oh, in yeah? the summer. Yeah. What yeah. position? Third base. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I was a I was an outfielder, and then one tryout, we were all rotating. Made a dive and play at third base, and he's like, "All right." Get comfy there, <laughs> and I, I never played another position after that. So no way. Yeah, that's yeah, sick. Third so. base. You must love that field out in the at the RBC Center. You boys must warm up out there with yeah. the ball, play some fire. That oh, guy, yeah. That's such a good facility. Oh, it's like unreal. the gym too. You're talking about how you're a workhorse. That gym. You must be. You must oh, live there. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah, unreal for sure. Such a nice facility. Like, I've heard guys that are in the NHL say that's a nicer facility than some NHL facilities. Oh, practice. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's our practice rink, right? And not to kind of like throw stuff out there, but we are renovating the Scotiabank, and I seen the plans today. Oh, really? They're renovating. Oh, they're renovating. Not not this year, but during the summer and everything like that. Oh yeah. Oh, there's gonna be some nice no nice way. renovations there. Yeah. So. Oh, the new owners. Do they have anything to do with it? Oh, I'm sure they they yeah. play a part. <laughs> yeah. They 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 want to. They treat us so well. Yeah. Um, I'm very grateful for our owners, and yeah, they they have a plan, and they're gonna. Yeah, it's going to look really nice. I remember one of the first games that they came into ownership, I went to a game, or maybe it was like the first week, whatever it was, and I saw the shot, the T-shirt shotgun. Like, usually it was just one gun, but then the new owners came in, and they had a shotgun that shot out like 30 T-shirts in a round. I was like, they're putting their money where, oh, they're putting their money where their mouth is. They're getting a yeah. new T-shirt gun, and I was like, this guy's going to work out. Yeah, it's all, they want everyone to enjoy their experience at the games and everything like that, so that's, that's their main thing. They're all about family, yeah. so it starts in the team the community the fans and everything like that everyone's a everyone's part of the family so yeah. they want to treat everyone and right. have a great experience i want to go back to those five games sorry and you being yep. a sponge um in terms of like the pace of play did you feel comfortable right away or no <laughs> to On be honest ice. to be honest i went uh one of my first shifts i come down uh with a three on two i took a terrible shot right in the goalie's chest but it, it popped out my the guy driving buried it uh oh the newfoundland guy i forget his name but anyways he, he buried it <laughs> And I was like, man, I got a point first period. Like, this is great. And then, yeah, it, it, I got a grind for points ever since. But it was funny how it just felt like, I was like, oh, maybe I could be a point guy in this league. And it and it, it comes really quick. It shows you how skilled and great the league is, right? But, yeah, no, I think everyone was everyone was just so strong and everything like that, um, especially coming from midget. The, the, just the strength, the speed, and everything was was a big jump. A hundred percent. Did you get to play in any other, uh, any other, excuse me, rinks for those guy five games or were they all at home? No, I was, I think, I don't even think I played at home. Oh no. No, I think it was first five. I was Charlottetown, Cape, and, um, I'm pretty sure it was St. John. Oh, what a tease. Yeah. So I didn't even get to the Scotiabank those first five games. So. Wow. Yeah. No. Well, it makes you work harder to get back there. That's it. Because then right. you're just like, all right, let's go. Yeah, I got to get back go. there next year. Yep. And then you're year in junior A. Mm-hmm. Would you call that a development or would you call that a confidence booster? Development. Oh yeah. Development for sure. Oh yeah. It was it was great for me. Um, I was indecisive between going back midget my third year, going to play junior A. Actually, training camp with the Mooseheads, I really thought I was going to make that team at 17, and I got a concussion day two of camp, like knocked out cold, like I was out cold. So <sighs> they're like. You gotta go through concussion protocol. Like, you're gonna have to go home. So that's how I, I saw. So I was like, all right. So then you gotta make your decision, midget, junior. And I was like, you know what? The way I want to play, playing with the older guys would really set the tone for me. So, but that was a that was a big wake up. Like the junior A guys, they were they were big and strong. Especially and, in Miramichi, like from when I played there, you you didn't leave there without a bruise, a bloody nose, a chipped tooth. Like you didn't leave there. Well, in, those in the same boards, piece you arrived. Yeah, those are just they're wood. They're straight wood. Like yeah, it's uh, it's heavy, and and guys are there to, they play the game hard. So, but it was great for me. It developed me yeah. to kind of prepare me, and then and then I just had to kind of adjust the speed. And when I got the speed in the queue, I really felt comfortable. How did you find like the timing and everything from junior A to the queue? Did you find the timing different? Because you're playing with guys like Dume, and you're, you're just like this guy. He's seeing things I'm not seeing. How how do you find like just just timing and everything with playing with players that are skilled? Right, it's it's different, right? And I'm not saying there's no skilled guys in junior A, but it is. There's definitely a jump, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, like <laughs> Dume for example, like that just on another level. Like I, I watch film and he's making plays that I still couldn't see on film. I watch a few times and it's like, how does that even get through? But he just finds a way, right? And I, and it's great to play with guys like that obviously i wasn't on the ice with do me very much but <laughs> but you know right so yeah there's a longer shift yeah that's it, right? that's it yeah 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 so but yeah no sometimes you just 
people will find you in different spots and you'll have the the chances more 100 percent. the the year the world juniors were here access did you guys have to the rink did you guys get tickets how, how did that work for for you guys or you guys were in the season i guess we were yeah i was yeah. in season so we um i got to go to boat i was in moncton right because uh we were home for christmas, christmas break and so i went to a canada game in moncton just the exhibition there and then when we came back it was still going so we actually got to watch two of our teammates uh tilly obiaska and david morvek they were playing against each other wow. in the tournament so that was super cool but yeah other than that we didn't really get to get in and everything but obviously like my billets had tickets and stuff so i went to a few of the games but yeah. they were at the canada games of course so but we watched on tv we were having a great time it was it was it was a crazy experience what a time to be in halifax oh my god right? what a time just so. fantasy land it wasn't real no. it wasn't real at no. all it's just an unbelievable time i say that all the time to these guys that was just you could do whatever you want like work like work just like yeah whatever just, there's no one working. Everyone's watching the game. It was, it was one of yeah. the best times ever. It's such a great venue to like host too. You could just pack people in there. Even if Canada wasn't playing, just Germany, Sweden, Tuesday, one o'clock. Right. Somehow you get nine thousand people in there. It just wasn't happening when we the year after when you were watching it. it like there's no one at the ring. You know what I mean? Whereas Halifax, it was yeah. And even Moncton, I will say, I love Moncton. Right? Obviously, I lived in Moncton for so many years, but like not not even close to the same atmosphere like you go and it, there's tons of people there but you just you don't even feel it right and then you go to halifax and it's just on another level why do you yeah. think that is i ask that question all the time like why do you think people in halifax you probably know better than anyone at this point of your career why do you think people here are just obsessed with it oh they're just so passionate about it like you go you walk around we're going to the game three hours early people have their jerseys on they're all over the place it's awesome Moncton and I haven't seen many Wildcat jerseys kicking around, right? So it's it's just not that same passion. And I don't know I don't know if it's because the the big three that have came out of here that inspired everyone, right? Um, or what it is. But yeah, I'm super grateful that they're so passionate about hockey because being with the Mooseheads and everything, right? hundred so. percent. The Mooseheads do a really good job branding you guys as well. Like you guys are really well represented in the community and they make sure that the public knows about it. You guys do a really good job of that. Like what was yesterday? Yesterday was like a fan favorite fan fest or, or something fan yeah. fest yeah, something and like, like I, they someone filmed the line and it was just it was a mile long oh. I, you're just wow yeah. it's unbelievable the amount of support and, and what they've done over the years the history at this point is just it's there it's right. unbelievable yeah super we're all super grateful like i know like sometimes fans are like oh you've been sitting here so long signing so many autographs we love it right it's, it's awesome it's part of the game i know like when i was younger with the wildcats like if you ever got an autograph it was it was awesome. It was one of the best days, right? So you got to enjoy that experience, and we just love doing it for everyone. Um, for me, playing in the Metro, excuse me, Scotiabank Center for the first time, big deal. You, would it be the Coliseum, or would it be the new arena? Like, was it bittersweet going to play, what's the name of the new rink, sorry? Avenir. Avenir. Like, was it bittersweet playing there, or would you, like, w tell me that story. I would have much rather Coliseum, because okay. that's, I, I, my first game at the Avenir, I was playing in, which is pretty cool. But I never had, whereas the Coliseum, I was always at those games, right? Just a different atmosphere. Uh, it would have been really cool. But the Avenue Center is gorgeous too, right? Yeah. So it's pretty sweet. It, it worked out. But yeah, it would have been nice to get one game in the Coliseum. Maybe an exhibition game or something if they could ever get that going. Is it still there? It's there. I don't know if there's ice, and I don't know what they do with it. Do you ever play lacrosse? I played one game. You could use lacrosse in there. Yeah, maybe. I played one game lacrosse. Uh, I was so bad they put me in net. <laughs> and that didn't go much better so it was just yeah no lacrosse didn't last very long for me okay fair enough who were the guys like growing up that you looked up to uh with the Moncton Wildcats organization I just want to know if I played against them well who, Connor, like... Connor Garland was kind of like the guy when I was um but Steven Johnson do you know Steven Johnson yeah I played for Smew yeah 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 he was he was my guy I, really? I'm one of his but I'm his brother is one of my best friends there so I'm good buddies with Thomas, um, and yeah, watching him play, I, I even played a game of ball hockey with him. He, he wouldn't remember this, but I remember totally. And, um, yeah, he was such an inspiration. And when I got drafted, um, someone was telling me, they're like, yeah, like the scouts are comparing you to Steven Johnson. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. Like, that's crazy. So no, he was, yeah, he was kind of like the guy that I looked up to for sure. During the Monctonian of the year before you got drafted, what were conversations like, uh, with teams or was there any conversations? Uh, I didn't have many. No way. No, I so wasn't. What like, about after? Yeah. Sorry, like, keep going. Keep yeah, going. no, it was kind of just. I I thought I had a good Monctonian. Actually, I played in the 
It's that all-star game. It's like the Q Q Cup. Yeah, what the... QMJHL Cup. No, it's like no. one. It's like an all-star it's game. The or all-star something for the Monctonians. The Monctonians all first years. Like I was playing in that and stuff. Um, but yeah, it was. I didn't have many conversations there. Now Sam Savo, on the other hand, he was highly rated. Right, he fourth overall to Gatno and everything like that. Um, so he was getting all these interviews, and then the decor too. Like we had four first years, so they were getting interviews. And I was kind of like there was an article. You once. just like hang out with them. Like you guys want me to come? Yeah, hang out? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, hey, I'm here too. Yeah, yeah I'm here. So, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. You want me to walk you over? Yeah. <laughs> Literally. So yeah, like there was like an art. I still remember there's an article we had. Like, we had six first years, and five of them were all listed, and I was the guy left out. Like, just little things like that that kind of just drive you a little bit. And then when, yeah, you just played hard, kept doing your thing, right? It didn't really bother me, but it was a little motivation, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, I was getting a few calls. Uh, it was COVID, so I had one interview in person with Rouen. And then after that, it was all phone calls and just, like, nothing too much. Um, I knew Halifax was interested, and then... I saw like two of my teammates both went Rouen, so I was kind of like, "Oh, Rouen would be cool, right?" And then, but then I was like, "We want Halifax." And then, I probably went a little later in the draft than I wanted to. I, was, I won't want to say I was getting frustrated, but you're sitting there, you're just watching a screen. So our draft was really boring. The first round they did a good job on video, and then after that, it's just like your name would just pop up. And you're like, "Oh, I got drafted." <laughs> so it was like, so we're just sitting there, me, me and the whole family, just for hours, right? You go from the second round all the way down, and then yeah, um, I got the phone call, Cam Russell, and then you're just you're watching the screen, and all that happens is Braden McPhee, Halifax Moosehead. This is a great. This is good because like we stream a lot of minor hockey and guys who are trying to get to your position, and like you're saying, there were six guys and you were the fifth guy not on the list, like. Talk about it from that moment on what you did in order to have that crest now. Like from, from that moment on, not seeing your name there, you're in that Q game. You're what, the, what? From that moment on, what was that? All right, let's, let's go, Brayden. You got it. Yeah. What was it? I For me, I always just go back to work. That's just how I was raised. It's just like whatever happens, just work harder. Like there's nothing, even if you're highly rated or lower rated, just keep working. Um, and... Like, I don't, luck and stuff like that, I don't think about luck or anything. It's just, everything comes back to work. And if you work, you'll get those bounces, you'll get where you wanted to go. And I think that was a bounce for me, going to Halifax, even though it might have been a little later than I wanted. Um, obviously, it worked out great for me, right? So I think I'm super fortunate for that. I think you're, you could have, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your personality too, you're you're a good guy. It seems like I've only known you for 30 minutes, but like you're pretty positive so far. So that that's definitely had something to do with it. We all know hockey rooms. There can be people in the room you don't want, but if you have a positive mind frame, positive body language, that can take you a long way. And that for the kids watching everything, like that's some great advice, right? Uh, I was watching your guys podcast with Sim there earlier yeah. and that was his advice. Like just be a good person. Right. Um, and that's like super important. And I think that's, why I got my 20 spot. Look, you can check the numbers and everything like that. Not many guys played, I think, 56 games and have six points at 19 and get a 20 spot, right? So, like, it's just, like, be a good person, show up to the rank, have energy, and good things will come from that. So, you know, maybe Lord does it. What's his first name, sorry? Andrew. And I'll call him Coach Lord. Coach yeah. Lord, you know, maybe doesn't know your, your, your background and, you know, how nice of a guy you are, how hard of a worker you are. What was that con your first conversation like with him in order to just be like, hey, how you doing, Coach? What what was that conversation like to not I don't want to say win him over but just to like introduce yourself? Yeah, well, we had a great conversation. He's a very he's full of energy. He's a ball of energy. If you guys could ever get a chance to interview him, he'd be he'd be an awesome guy to get. <laughs> okay, he's, we'll yeah, so he's awesome. Um, but yeah, I was to be honest, my first I was like, look, I'm gonna be your hardest working guy. He's like, what what player are you? What are you gonna do? I'm like, I'm an energy guy. I'm gonna be your hardest worker. Four check, bat check, like everything. That's that's what I do. That's my role on this team. And then whatever comes out of that comes out of that. But that's kind of my focus is just I want to be your hardest working player. So what was his response? Like what role did he give you? Like obviously you're going to be a leader for the younger guys, the hardest worker, all that. But like what role did he give you? Or is it everything you just said to me? Well, it's mostly that. But I think it's now it's you're a 20 year old. You're an old guy. It's kind of like have some confidence. Like he's he's pushing me to be like he knows I have it in me, that scoring touch and everything like that. He's like, you've done it over the years. It. It's just the confidence to get it back. And he's been really pushing me for that. And it was just fantastic. I'm super grateful. And hopefully that success comes with the hard work and everything. How many days have you guys been on the ice consecutively? You said camp started August 4th? Yeah. 
That's early. Yeah, it was early. So it how was many early. times have you guys been skating over the past two months? Well, we and it was like for like two straight weeks, a lot of the guys were on the ice. I think our first like full day off was Labor Day weekend. When's Labor Day weekend? So it was like the first week, weekend of, of September. September. So so that's a full month. Yeah, full month. Um, now, if you, like, I didn't get any, like, um, inner squad games or anything like that. I kind of, we, me, like, Schultz, a few of the return guys just worked out. We were working out twice a day. Like, it was a lot. Um, and then, yeah, we got right into the, to practices and stuff. And it, it's intense. It's full of energy. And that's just what we need to bring, right? As a younger team, it's, like, energy, energy, be the hardest working guys. And then we'll have success from that. And that's kind of what he's pushing towards. Yeah. And he's great with, like, the little things, too. Like, he's, like. Like, if you watch one of our practices, we'll have a second net in the corner. So you, like, take your shot, and you got to stop in the net and sprint to get another puck and shoot. And we're kind of like, why why, why are we doing that, right? And he's like, well, if we can get that, let's say we have 100 practices, right? And then you have 20 of those shots. Think about how many more shots you're getting in the year. And 2,000. Stuff, right? So he's kind of like, that's how he thinks. It's just a little bit every day in that development, and we'll we'll progress from there. There was uh, there's a really good defenseman for the Mooseheads, Conrad Albelshizer, back in the day. And the few games I got in with him during off ice, we would do uh, ten laps around like the what do you call it, the track at the Scotiabank Center. It'd be just be ten. The boys would be gassed, and Conrad would just do one extra lap. And it was the first time I ever like saw that extra whatever. And I don't never forget him doing that one extra lap and going, okay, well that's why. He is where he is, and then a couple years later, he wins a Memorial Cup. So every time I see, I think of like a, a putting that extra effort in, and like, I ah, will it ever be rewarded for doing that extra effort? I think of that one extra lap, and I go, yeah, it will. But those your co- coaches are right, just those little little extra, you're gonna be just fine. It adds up. It all oh, adds, adds up. Hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. You're saying camp was tough, a lot of energy. Is it, it like you know last year you didn't finish the way you guys wanted to finish? Is was camp this year? tough in the sense of okay we need to prove to everyone that that wasn't our best hockey or was camp tough because you know we just want to be a better team like what was the energy i guess you could say at the beginning of camp um towards last year or is it just forgotten don't even think about it it's definitely not forgotten for me especially like it's not it's not forgotten it's a learning curve you got to learn from all the mistakes and i think it was a lot more just kind of like not the things that were on the ice a little bit off the ice kind of learning from mistakes that happened and why the season ended the way it did but then you kind of put it in the back, too, and just think, all right, new year, it's exciting. Um, we don't use the word rebuild. A lot of the fans will be. Um, but we're just excited to get better every day, develop, and see where this, see where it goes. But, yeah, I, we don't totally hide it. We want to learn from it. Yeah. But we don't want – that's not why we're energetic. We just want to be – we want to be excited to play. Awesome. There was an article, yeah, in CBC the other day. They were like, yeah, the Mooseheads aren't buying into the whole rebuild thing. I love that. I love that. You just, you own it. You know, we're, we're a great team. We're good. Yeah. I yeah. love that. And our preseason, like, we beat Cape Breton, who's going to be a great team. Like, I know they didn't have their full roster. We didn't either. But we know that we can compete with the top teams. We got some great players, and we outwork every team. As we've seen in playoffs, a two seed can lose to a seventh seed very easily, right? So it can happen, and that that's kind of a little bit of motivation for us, too, as going into many games as the underdog, some would say. Um yeah, if the seven seed can be the two seed sweep last year, right? We can do the same, right? We just want to 100%. reverse the roles there. It's a feather in the cap, almost uh, in the league of how you know widely talented and evenly skilled each team is. You know, it's it, it's a great league. Every time I go to a game in the queue, there's never really an off night. I don't go to a ton, but every time I go, the product is there. Just physical, fast. You have those skilled guys. It just reminds you of a mini NHL. It's just a mini NHL team of the guys who are just there and the guys that play their roles. It's just it's a great system. Right. It's yeah. a great league. And like you if you don't come to play, you're gonna lose. Like it's 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 tighter than a lot of people think, right? Like most teams, there will be better teams. In every league there's always better teams, but if that better team has an off night, any team can beat anyone, right? Which is exciting and that's what you want in the league. Hundred percent. Keys to uh, traveling in the queue. A lot of travel, a lot of moving around. What are some uh, keys to success to making sure that you're comfortable on the road? A lot of sleep. I think that's <laughs> the big thing is getting the sleep. I know it's tough on the buses sometimes. Um, it can be really uncomfortable, but just find a way to get that sleep. Every hour of sleep is huge. Like I know a lot of the guys think like, oh, we're getting back at 2. 
I'll stay up till two, but then if you have a practice the next day, like you're just losing so much sleep. If you can fall asleep, try and get your sleep in. I think that's the biggest thing. And then just, yeah, the little things like eating healthy, drinking a lot of water and everything like that. Cause on the road, it gets tough, right? It gets tough, like a lot of gas station and just all that stuff. Like if you can find some good food to get into you, drinking your water, you'll be fine. Can you sleep on the bus or you, can you sleep or no? I try my best. I, I do struggle you bring with your it. Pillow? <laughs> yeah. I bring the pillow, sometimes the blanket. Yeah. Um, yeah, me and my, we, me and Jack Martin, we sit next to each other. So we kind of got a system going there. Sometimes if you're struggling, we, one guy will be on the floor sometimes. Like we're trying different <laughs> yeah, things, yeah, yeah. but you, you got to find a way to get some sleep. Are you a back of the bus guy? You're a 20 now. Yeah. I'm second back. Like, so Schultz is in the back. We'll get the captain, yeah. the seat of the back there. So we don't have the full, the full setup yet, but I'm sure he'll be in the back. I'll be in the row right above, which is, which is nice. Is, has that already been established or does that happen on the first road trip? Well, we've talked about it. Oh, it's we, already, we, it's we've, already... claimed, we've claimed our, <laughs> we've claimed our spots. So hockey's so yeah. weird like that. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's, but it's great. You know what I've always thought? I was thinking about this the other day randomly. Warm ups for hockey teams. You know, like has the warm up been the same for the Moosehead since your first year? Like who changes it? Or is it just like as soon as the organization starts, it just stays the same for its entire franchise? You know? We haven't changed anything. My four years, nothing's changed. So maybe a little bit of timing and stuff. I know, you know, the two on ones when you kind of come in and the def- right? The classic. Um, just one year we had to slow that down. It was getting a little sloppy, a little fast. We were going too fast. The goalies weren't setting up for okay. the shots. But other than that, nothing's changed. Even like me and Jack Martin, we have a routine. And if you like really watch us, like between drills and stuff, we're stick handling through each other, making passes and stuff. It's always the same. Oh, so. is that? I think, and he's like on a knee or something. Yeah, he's on the knee. Yeah, I'm doing I stick saw that on East Link. Stuff. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, we we have our routine and it hasn't changed. So that's so. Are you superstitious? I'm not superstitious. I used to be really bad, yeah. and then I was like, it used to mess with me more than helped me. <clears throat> so I'd be like, if it something didn't happen, I would be like a mess, have a terrible game. So I'm like, we got to eliminate that, right? Just kind of like go to the rink, kind of have your system, right? Tape your stick, do all that stuff. But I used to have stuff timed, man. Like I used to have a timer. All right, take the stick. Yeah, all right, now we can put the shoes on. Oh, it was it was really bad. So I was like, okay, we're eliminating this. Let's just chill, play sewer, you know, with the boys. Like just have fun, but prepare. And yeah, we we have their team warm up. I have a few extra exercises I do every time, but – yeah, there's not. I don't want to be superstitious like I used to be. You said three hours before the game you get there. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. early, man. Yeah, we and sometimes even earlier, kind what? of just, just four yeah. hours. Sometimes you'd be there. Wouldn't four three. hours is pushing it? Yeah, four hours is pushing it. But we we leave. Me and Jack, we leave. Now I'm kind of out of my routine. Now I kind of forget exactly what time it is. But we <laughs> leave at the same time. We kind of like, not we're not superstitious about it anymore, right? But it's like, all right, let's leave around then. Whenever we get to the rink, we have plenty of time just to chill, talk with the guys, and then prepare for the game as we get there i like that i like that is it going to change this year or are you just going to find a new routine oh no well, Stays. Well, yeah yeah I, I like everything everything I, I like how it is i feel like my body's prepared to go in those extra exercises are little things like i got bad shoulder and hips and stuff so you kind of just prepare those a little extra than normal and then yeah you kind of go from there having injuries do you have to train differently too 100%. less weight like more reps something like that yeah it depends right so like yeah my shoulder i've had a few problems with it uh the ac joint so yeah sometimes you got to like lower the weight kind of and like last year i was like bench pressing like 10 pounds like it's just kind of like keeping the motion then you slowly build up your weight until you're fully ready to go right yeah 100 percent. i always found cardio i guess you know you've been skating forever but the first even if you're in shape and your cardio is good i always found that first game of the year just just never were 100%. But You're it's never, like that for the other team, too. Right. Yeah. Like, even the broadcasters for every game in the NHL, it's just like, all right, first game of the year, a little sloppy. It's just like there's always that one-two game that, like, no one is ever – no one's ever there yet. Yeah, it's hard to be in game shape unless you're playing games, right? So yeah. Even, like, inter-squad games, I think, don't count. Like, they do, but – it's just another level regular you know, season. You're playing against your teammates and stuff too, right? So it's kind of hard. Like sometimes you don't want to be like hitting them as hard as you would in a game and stuff. Yeah. But then you see Cape yeah. Breton player, you're like, all right, let's give, him, <laughs> let's give him a little extra here. You know what I mean? So, yeah. How did the concussion happen? You, and you said you had a concussion in training camp? Yeah. You can, is that, was that a touchy subject? No, it's not touchy at all. Was, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to see the video of it. Oh, it would have been bad. Was but, it a teammate that did it to you? No. Well, it was training camp, uh, okay. but he never he didn't make the team. Uh, he he went and played Yarmouth after, so we played against each other a few times in junior okay, A. Okay. Um, but yeah, just I got a pass, middle of the ice, head down, and that was I would I don't even remember any like honestly I remember like warm up and then after that total blank. Oh. Yeah, and then I got up. I, I don't remember skating off the ice. All I remember is kneeling down in the dressing room, and all I see is 
the head coach Sylvain there, and then Cam Russell. And I was like, uh oh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not great. That's not great. So yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Well, not amazing, but that's that's funny. Just waking up and seeing those two right. guys. Sylvain, he won the he won the league. Dude, he, I've, I've only known, I don't want a personal level somewhat, have a couple conversations, but hell of a coach he must be. Must be. Yeah. No, he was, he's a good coach. Yeah, yeah, he's a good coach. And he, like, we went to the finals with him. We were arguably a period and a game away from winning it. I was at the game. And then, yeah, and then he goes to Drummondville and wins it, which is great, right? And, yeah, he, he's a good coach. He really pushes players. Um and then, yeah, he knows how to win. Some yeah. people just know how to win, right? So. Uh, yeah, for sure. That The series in Quebec, or it was at home, but back and forth from Quebec. That must have been a lot of fun. Obviously not the outcome you want, but just, it wasn't even Nova Scotia or in Quebec. It was just it was just hockey around the world. That series had a buzz. Yeah. It, there was something about it that was magical. Yeah. There was a huge buzz. And then to be able to go back and forth from the two biggest stadiums in the queue, arguably the CHL, it was crazy. Like, that was the some plane, of the, the craziest. Plane. Oh, yeah. And you're flying with the other team, too. Wait, so, what? Yeah, so that's how we... Sorry, sorry. You flew with Quebec? We flew with Quebec. Back and forth Back on and the same forth. plane? Yeah. Yeah, so... How yeah. was that? Interesting. We kind of... We try to keep it quiet, keep it dialed in and stuff. But, yeah, like, we we were... It was it was just different, right? Just yeah. seeing guys, you battle it out, and you're just like... you're. Just, they're in the front, we're in the back, and then they got some reporters dividing us in case it got ugly there. No. But, but yeah, no, nothing ever happened, right? It's kind of, it's all business, so. That's, I, that's great. That's a different dynamic. Yeah. I tried to sneak on that plane for game seven if it went back. I was like, obviously, it sucks it didn't happen, but that's different. That's crazy. Yeah, it's unique. Did sure. you know before going to the plane? Well, or did you just show up and they're there? Um, yeah, they were kind of just there. like, it's just how it went. We were just like, oh, there's, there's the Rampires, I guess. Right. So we're going to yeah jump on the same plane there. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Got to save money. Cut costs. One plane. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we were really two really poor teams. I yeah. Guess, right? yeah. <laughs> um, that's good stuff. I love that. You see, you know, I was saying on the intro before you got here, you talk about one of the more blessed junior careers, one organization, um, coming from Moncton two hours away. Do you ever pinch yourself and understand like how lucky you are to be in the situation that you're in? Oh, I'm so grateful, right? So grateful for everything that it all worked out. Even going to Miramichi too, which wasn't too far away from home, um, and then yeah, obviously playing in front of the fans, having having some great coaches, teammates, everything, right? And all the opportunities and everything I've learned from the organization and everything like that. Just super grateful. Yeah, I have 100%. to pinch myself all the time. Um, afterwards too, like in terms of like the 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 fans and everything like that. When you go to other stadiums and you you see the fan base, I'm not saying they're not great, but then you get to come home and does it feel like a seventh man on the ice? You know, like does it does it feel like playing in front of that crowd when there's a good amount of people there? Does it do you feel it? Hundred percent. Oh, they're yeah, they're great. When when especially when the crowd gets into it, that energy it it just adds energy to the bench to every player, and then we just kind of push ourselves a little bit more. <laughs> Something we're trying to work on this year is to we don't need the crowd, right? We need to be able to do that ourselves. <laughs> But it's still, even when we're full of energy and then they add on top of it, oh, it's, it's yeah. And it, it's intimidating for other teams as well, right? When you're getting cheered against. like So it, it, we definitely use it to our advantage. What are some of your, or I guess maybe one of your favorite memories in that building? Um, well, there's been a few. Um, I think just when we played Quebec, and I know it, but... The best feeling was when Zach Lewis scored that goal. We had the lead, and there was three minutes left. And that was like, I've never heard the play so loud. It was like, <laughs> it was crazy now, obviously. it the, the emotion switched very quickly. But that moment was like, wow, what just happened, right? We were playing against Patrick Roy and the Ramparts. The whole crowd just exploded, and we had the lead, right? It was just, it was like a, the craziest feeling I've ever had. For sure. We, I was up in the press box when it happened. You could, you, you literally felt like the roof was gonna go. Right. You're no, just, you're, just you're, you're, you're just like, whoa, just wow. I remember that. Yeah. It was some, loud. some crazy memories in that building. History. Oh, yeah. History. Larue's actually been on the podcast. He's doing well. Do you keep in touch with people? Yeah. yeah. I, I was texting him the other day. Were actually. You? So yeah, no, he's he's a great guy. Really great dude. Um, had a great year last year too. So see how, see how his camps and everything go. Maybe. Hopefully, get a few games in. Well, he get a few games in the NHL, and then 
hopefully crack a lineup here soon. Really cool thing about the opportunities that you get is playing against some of these next NHL stars. You know, you get to form your own stories about how oh, I took a face off against them. He almost broke my wrist, but that's why, you know, like there's just some really cool, like, I don't know, stories and opportunities that you get to travel and, and see and play against some of these guys. It's just, yeah. it's a great thing. 100%, yeah. So, yeah, I always kind of like, I'll, I'll ask the top guys every time to fight. <laughs> no. That's kind of my, that's kind of my, I'm going to take that when I'm older. I'll be like, I asked him to fight. He, now they all laugh at me, right? They're always like, who are you, right? Who's this dude? But I'll always be like, yeah, like Heinz there, sure. Oh, those guys on Sherbrooke, Joshua, all those guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I love, I love just that because you know they will never, right? Because they're, and they're just like, who's this dude? But, yeah, I'll, I'll be taking that when I'm done hockey, tell the kids or whatever, right? Oh, yeah, I asked him to fight. He didn't want it, it, though. He didn't want it. Right. So, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite like pickup energy thing? If you say the team is down and like you're the guy that needs the spark, what is it? Is it a hit? Is it a, a chirp? Is it a, like what's your thing that gets that that gets the team going? Like what's your secret sauce in that regard? Yeah, like just just a hard shift, just yeah. four checking. Obviously, like if you, you can score a goal, that's how you really get the energy going. But yeah, how I how I bring the energy is just four checking hard, getting a good back check too. Like that that's something that brings a lot of energy that people don't even realize, right? Is when you see a teammate flying back, catching a guy and then hitting him after, like that just gets everyone going, right? So yeah. that's how I like to bring the energy. Some people don't know what this means. Maybe you could explain it to people. How does good defense create great offense? Yeah, for sure. Like obviously when the pucks when you guys are out of your defensive end, you're gonna be in the ozone more more chances, right? Things like that can happen. Also, something that we're working on this year a lot is like sprinting back. Um, a lot of the times you'll see wingers, centers, kind of like float back, kind of looking at the play and stuff. For us, we want to be able to sprint back, get back fast, and that just adds gap from the forward to the D. And then if their D aren't gapping up with us, right, that that adds so much more ice that we can skate and generate offense from there. Do you think it's still too early to like form an identity that your team will have this year? Or does that come maybe 10, 15 games in? Oh, we're just going to be hard work and energy. Like that's going to be, energy is going to be the thing, right? We're going to be buzzing around. They're going to be hard to, hard to keep up with this team. We got some speed and stuff like that. So that's going to be the identity playing fast and seeing what happens. Now that I think about it, you're the, what's the behind the scenes thing you guys do? What's it called? Moose track, it's moose track, unbelievable. By the way, whoever like does that and films it produces like the best. unbelievable. Now that you mention it, um, I think it was episode two came out the other day, and Cam said in one of your guys' meetings before Lord went up, he's like, "This is our identity. We're going to be hardworking. When teams come to play against us, they're not going to get out ever easy." Something I forget what he said right. exactly, but whatever he said basically just relayed what you said, and I thought it was really, really, really well put because that is an identity you want to have. Over anything else, it's just a hard team to play right. against. You know, if you are going to get two points up from off, it's not going to be easy. Right? Yeah. No one's going to leave. No one's going to leave the rink after playing us and being like, "Ah, that was fine." Right? Yeah. Like we're gonna every game, and then that's going to lead to many wins. Right? So. How, how do you find um uh, the moose trap? Like the the cameras around, I guess. Like the behind the scenes stuff. Like how do the boys feel about it? How the coaches? Like there's some moments that are they're capturing that. You're like, how do they get that? How did they make everyone feel comfortable in that room to film that? It looked great. Like, how did the players feel about we it? We love them. They're part of the team. They're okay. always walking around the cameras and stuff like that. They came to a road trip on Quebec and stuff. Like, it was just, they're always around. It's great. And then they do a fantastic job, too. So, it's always nice to to see the videos and stuff after, kind of recap how the season goes. Talk about something that you're going to appreciate 20 years down the line. Right. You know, just some of that content that you can like show your, you know, it's just, it's, that's a really cool thing yeah. to have. Yeah. Like these are the best days of our lives, right? Like we're just enjoying it and yeah, it's going to be out there and we can go back and look at it. So yeah, we're super grateful for it. How do you guys find out like if the cameras are going to be around or not, or you don't, they're just there or they're not there. They're just there. Yeah. No, they're just, yeah okay. they're just, they'll just, they'll pop in whenever. And then yeah, sometimes you'll like, like the other day when we announced captains and stuff, right? It was like, oh, something might be going on, right? When they have the cameras, but most of the time they're just there to kind of watch practice, get some clips and all that stuff. So, yeah, they're awesome. That's great. Yeah. Any adjustments that you've made in your gear this year? Stick, flex, grip? I know some guys get bow or some guys don't. Well, any adjustments? I went up flex this year. Why? So, put on a little bit of weight this summer. So, yeah, so I wanted to have a little bit more. So, I find when I a whippier stick, harder to pick up passes was kind of what I noticed when I jumped from 65 to 75. So you were at 65 last at, year? No, not last year. Like when I played Miramichi though, I was 65. That is so whippy. So whippy. And passive just going on the stick and stuff. So I was like, okay, we'll go up 75. Been 75 the last few years. And I was like, I put on almost 10 pounds, like some good weight this summer. Had a great summer. 
And I was like, do you want, let's go 80. And I've loved it so far. So really? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. so whippy. Oh yeah. So you must have nothing in Like obviously, you, you know, you can shoot, but like that flex makes you just a quick release in a tight spot. You don't need a big old wind up. Just a little pop pop. Yeah. It can, it can come off so much it's quicker. It's, it's nice that way. And now Lordo is really practicing with me to get that top hand out more so we can really snap it back. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of some skills we're working on right now with that extra mm. flex area. Yeah. Like the the dard era just kind of like he kind of just set a trend for that that style that quick like just so smooth like yeah. gravy he just the, the quick release he kind of just like i don't know trickle effect and everyone just kind of not copied it but like is trying to mimic it. hard to copy that shot oh yeah. no but just uh-huh. like I, who do you like you see his release and most guys are like this yeah. but like his hands are it's, it's just yeah and he so... finishes like that like he finishes this top hands way back here like he just gets as much as much snap as he can and that release is crazy so are you a big fan of film yeah i yeah. love film just yeah. we're a live streaming company too so maybe plug in how much you love watching right yeah. so yeah, yeah. Film, film's huge like i when we me and my brother so i have a brother who's playing flyers this year okay um and he'll like we watch back my games and he'll he's the hardest guy i mean he's he's tough on me but he'll be like yeah we gotta just adjustments that you gotta make right um, a lot of it for me is in the ozone, trying to find quiet ice and stuff like that, um, which is a great adjustment to make. Like getting to the dirty areas, that's where you're going to have those tapping goals, which you don't need skill to do, right? You need to be smart and be able to time things. And that's where film comes in. And then team film. Obviously, we do it every day. Team oh, film. yeah? Oh, every day. Well, you guys have that room. You might as well use it. Right? So, yeah, every day we're going over film. Um, we didn't play last week, right? Our game got canceled against Cape Breton. Oh, they had the flu or something. Yeah, they were all sick. So we played inner squad game, and we're recording that, and we go over clips of that. And this year, Lordo, we, we film practice. So we go over practice clips. Like, coaches watch our practices. That's like football. And then, yeah, so if you, you're you not hustling and stuff, maybe the coach won't see it on the ice. He'll definitely see it off the ice. So it's just nice to – film's great to just look back. And what we say, and how, like, Lordo's really big on over-preparing. So we over prepare in the week for with film, seeing what other teams are doing, seeing what we need to improve on, and then when it comes time to game, play the game. I used to love like looking for other teams' cheats, like looking at a guy who's out of position in the slot. It's like okay, well if he's going over here, you know he's going to move him going there. It used right. to be such a little game within the game that I used to play back when I played. Film wasn't as popular, but every now and then you'd get a, a glimpse of a game you played, and I don't know, I just loved finding things. It's, yeah. it, it was just fun to me. And faceoffs are huge for me. Every faceoff I take. I like watch it on film and oh, yeah. and take notes so when I can go back in season and I can look at it and be like, okay, what's this guy going to be doing? What has he done against me? And go from there. Like I'm kind of a hockey nerd in regards to face-offs especially. Um, just different ways. There's so many different ways to take face-offs and what they're going to do and what I'm going to do to prepare for that and hopefully have more success. What's your favorite? Is it just the clean... Or are you a stick first, kick back? What's your favorite draw? I kind of like to jump their stick. So I kind of like, I always win strong side. No matter if I'm on my weak side, I'm still winning it towards oh, my yeah. goalie. Yeah. So I always tell Russo, I'm like, just be ready. That's in case. so dangerous. Yeah. So he, Lordo, does, he's okay with that? I got Russo in front of me. He'll save it. I know. Right? So and Milner too. Oh, yeah. Early, no. the, the metro, Scotia makes Scotia, center of the ice. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The Scotia makes center. Ice could be trickling. Well, we got a new cooling system there too. So oh, I'm yeah. Hoping. Kelly was telling me that. Yeah. That's why you guys aren't playing at home for right. a bit. Oh, yeah. We're on the road for three weeks or whatever. Kelly was saying that, uh, well, I was there when I saw them putting in the cooling system. And man, it looked... High tech. They're saying like they got stuff from the roof coming all the way down to the ice and everything, so it's gonna be cool. It's gonna yeah, be your guy's owner. I don't know. He's a good, right? good, oh, good, yeah. good guy yep. there. Yeah. So yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be pretty cool. But yeah, back to face offs. I kind of like to just jump their stick because a lot of guys go for the sweep, right? They kind of push their stick forward and try to win it back. If I can jump over their stick, get on their inside, and pull back with the strength, mm. that's the biggest thing. My mm. forehand, it's hard to like out muscle guys, right? You're kind of awkward, so I just always try to win it just right through the legs. Try and win it straight back. The curve you using. Uh, P90. That's like a Sackic? It, it's quite a bit. There's quite a bit of curve on okay. it. Okay. Yeah, quite yeah. a bit of curve on it. So. Yeah, forehand's always tough on the draw. Every time I did go forehand, I'd try to bring my leg with it because it's yeah. a little insurance on right. the blade because if you lose it off your blade, at least right. your foot might get it over. Right. But still, and forehand's tough. Yeah, it's real tough. And But like a lot of people think like just a full sweep too, but it's like a lot of the times someone doesn't win on the first sweep. So you got to be able to like, that's what we've worked on a lot is like being able to like if you don't win it clean, got it, that second effort. If you can win that, your draw is 
your face off percentage will go up as well, right? Yeah. So it's just such little details, right? Yeah. The game's just little details. Oh, it's everything. Life's all little details. That's it, right? Do you love the after practice? Like when, you know, coach goes, all right, boys, you got 20 minutes and you got to go to school, do what you want. Are you just straight face offs? Are you one timers guy? What's your what's your thing? Depends on the day of the week. I used to take. <laughs> on, I love that you have an answer. Yeah. That depends on the day of the week. Like, and. <laughs> <laughs> one timers I used to take. Yeah, that's an adjustment I made. One timers I used to take all the time, and I go back and I think of all the games that I played in the queue, and there has not been one time where I've ever taken a one timer. So why am I <laughs> sitting here after every practice with the guys just ripping one timers? Like I'm like, do what? There's much better things to be doing. Um, like today we were kind of just goofing around a little bit. We play a rebound, of course, Tupac, you know, Tupac, right? So we play a lot of games like that. And then little skills that I do work on sometimes is like picking up rims. Uh, oh, yeah. I forget the number, but I saw a stat where it's like a percentage of the game, how much is on the walls, right? Like rims and all that stuff. If you can pick up pucks like Kucherov and stuff, pick up pucks and make a play right away, what an advantage you have, right? So little skills like that that – you do work on in practice, but you can really focus on after practice. And then edge work as well. I always tell like a lot of players, like with my brother and stuff, is like when when the Zamboni's coming on, like what I'd always do is you stay on and do some edge work, right? Because you can train your hands and your shot at home, but you can't you can't work on your skating much at home. So anytime you can, yeah, work on the edge work and stuff. 100%. I always find this time of year is important to gain chemistry with your wingers. <clears throat> just making sure that they know where the centerman is like coming out of the zone. I don't know. I always found that was like a, a hard thing to adjust to like early in the year. Just making sure that they knew where it was. Right. And it depends. Like, yeah, it depends on the situation and stuff. Like some centers come a lot lower than others. I think that's what we need to work on that me and like myself, I need to come a little bit lower and generate more speed. Coming, right. So sometimes you get too far up as a center and yeah. you just, it's a tougher play to make, right. It's almost impossible with the defenseman and the back checkers and stuff. So yeah. Have a little bit of space between your yeah. wingers, and then if they find you, you'll have a ton of speed. Well, we talk about, like, board work and, like, the puck being rimmed and, like, just wingers being able to, like, you know, sometimes these wingers are so skilled, they can just put their back heel on the boards, mm. pop it out to the centerman moving, and you're just like, oh, yeah. you're just like, you're a centerman, you're just drooling. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh yeah. that's my winger for the yeah, year. Yeah, that's it, right? You yeah, know, there's don't certain, change this line. Like, yeah. a, a good winger can make yeah. a centerman look really good. Oh, big time. Big Spe- time. Just, you know, if you can build chemistry early in the year, it's the best. I love the early year stuff, like. Earlier is the, the best. Well, it's just, you know, fresh gitch, fresh gear, NHL, yep. baseball playoffs. I don't know if you're a football guy. Just follow. I was saying yep. on the intro before you got here. It's just the, it's a great time of year. It is. You know, this yep. is my January. This is the fr- yep. the start of the year right 100%. now. And then, yeah, the you're, you're with the guy, new guys, right? Like, even training camp. Like, everyone dreads training camp. I love training camp, right? Like, obviously, it's a grind. But you get to know the guys, right? And you're kind of like just grinding it out, trying to set a new culture for the team and stuff. So, it's, yeah, this is great. You must be, it's like, are you just, what's that thing like where you're, uh, you have so much energy, but you can't play yet. Or you're just itching. Yeah. You're oh. itching. You just want to, you just so, want to hit yeah. someone. Yeah. Yeah. We, I got a few preseason games in, but it's not, not the same, right? I'm super fired up. Yeah. No, you, you also want to like get hit. That's it. Right. Like you yeah. just, you want to feel contact. That's what I told my, my line mate. I think it was Logan Crosby or whoever it was, right? He got, he got hit hard first shift. And I was like, that's great. That's what you need. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Be hit or Yeah. Throw a hit. That right? was my so. key. Whenever I wasn't in a game, I not that I looked to get hit, but I went in the corner. Oh, yeah. I'm not a big corner guy, but I just love you know. I just get a little, get a little something, a little right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just, I get you. Into just it. feel it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's the. It's a secret to it. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. It wakes you right up for sure. So. Hundred percent. Where's your yeah. first game at this year? Charlottetown. Oh yeah, Eastlink Center. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, when, yeah. What day for? Friday. I'm pretty sure we got a Friday Saturday. This like week. this Friday? Yeah. Dude, it's Wednesday. That's like two more days from two now. Two more days. You guys we're... leaving today or no, tomorrow? No, we'll, we'll head up Friday. Friday morning. Yeah, and then we'll head to St. John after that, right after the game. And then we have game that Saturday. Dude, you're, like, you're, you're pretty much in it. We're right there. Yeah, a few more sleeps and we're there. Yeah. Oh, dude, Fired you're, just, up. you're itching. Oh, no, I can't wait. That's can't great. Wait. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah, I can't sure. wait to get out to a game. Yeah, no, we're all we're all pumped to be back. And it's just like a new team. new Like everything's just right. You kind of just, you work so hard. Like we talked about, training camp was a long time. Yeah. So now it's, yeah, we're ready to go. How many new guys? We have eight rookies. So Who was working at Cows? Uh, Walter's there. Walter's was yeah, working at yeah. Cows? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, what a guy. What a kid. I love him. I love him. What a guy. Like, man, he left cows to go for the moose. Yeah, like, not oh, bad. No. Yeah, not bad. I don't, and maybe he's still working there. I was talking to him. I think he still might get a few shifts. Sorry, Lordo, I'm late for the game. My shift yeah. ends at yeah. 5. I'll yeah. be there when I can. I'll bring you some cow's ice cream. Yeah. Lordo wouldn't eat that, though, either. He wouldn't put that in his body. That's awesome. You saw you see you got seven new guys. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's, yeah. That, that puts kind of more of a responsibility on you a little bit. Guys are going to be looking at you. And it's, yeah, it's exciting, right? You kind of want to share some of your knowledge that you know so they can have a successful year and then lead into a few years after that, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, it's it's great. I love it. Are you a lead by vocal, lead by example, or both? I like to think a little bit of both. I'm very vocal, though. I like to talk. And I think leadership is more just kind of like giving everyone the opportunity to be the best. Um, and we can work on that every day. Like, I don't want anyone not to be excited to come to the rink and stuff like that. Like I need to have the energy and that people want to be around me and then we can kind of grow as a team. Do you think you can teach leadership or you're just born with it? Oh, you can definitely teach leadership. Can you? Yeah, you can learn leadership. Were you taught it or were you born? My dad, my dad is a really good leader. So I always lead back to him with that kind of stuff. But yeah, he, that's his biggest thing is he, he's a businessman. So he knows a little bit more about that side, but it's, um, hockey's a little bit different than the business, but his biggest thing was always like, you want to make sure that everyone's producing right at the highest capacity as they can right so if that's in business if that's in hockey whatever it is you need to make sure that people are feeling good about themselves want to be at the rink want to get better every day and that's what i want to do right and then i want to work hard and show them what it's going to take do you think that that correlates as well with not on game days just every day at the rink just you know practice is done boys are going to go home i'm going to get a little work going in like do, do you think like it translates into every single day with you because while you're here like you're not really you're a moose head you know, you know how the stigma is around here. You're not, if you're a guy at school, you're not just a guy at school. You're that moosehead guy at school. Right. Do you think that just the way you conduct yourself each and every day, other guys look at it and go, I got to start acting like that? I hope so. And I had a few guys when I first came to the mooseheads, like there was no, when I got called up my 17 year, it was kind of come to the rink when it was over, head home, chill at the billets type thing. And I can't, we kind of want it to be more than that. We want all the guys to like, when you get that workout and maybe throw in another set or whatever, right? Or just, chill hang around with the boys listen to some music we got a tv there like a lot of the days sometimes we'll have a morning practice and then an afternoon practice and then most of the guys are normally staying yeah the whole day so some days we have eight to ten hours at the rink right but you want to enjoy those days because and especially as my 20 year right this is my last year of junior so you just want to be with the guys just enjoying the little things right what are some things as a 20 year old that you want to take a second look around and take in what, what are some moments through this year that you want to like I said, observe and, and take it in 100%. A lot of the fan stuff, like just what we did yesterday, like just enjoy that because chances are you'll never have something like that again in your life where you have people lined up down the hall waiting for an autograph, right? Like it's 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 really cool. I want to enjoy every second of that. Anytime like I, I want to talk to the coaches and stuff, like if we're going to a school or something, like I want to be involved with that. Like I want to go be with all the fans, kind of enjoy that. And then just the little things like being with the boys, going to pure and simple, like just little, <laughs> little things like that, right? No Those free are, plugs. Don't say that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. we. Um, but that's just, that was kind of the spot. So, yeah, we, we're wherever, breakfast, lunch, supper, anything like that. Just just being with the guys. That's what I'll remember for sure. So it, you're not going to remember the, that win or that loss. Obviously, those big games and the big seasons. But in the middle of the season, stuff just kind of, right? You don't really remember all that stuff. You're gonna remember being with the guys and all the relationships you created. Hundred percent. That's really well said. That's great advice for anyone moving forward into something great and they want to take it in. Right. Do you see that video? Sorry, how much time are we at? Just over an hour. Are we? Wow. Oh That's my crazy. bad, man. Are you good? Oh, I'm great. Are yeah. you good? Yeah. Just you're sure? Yeah. Sorry. That was an hour. Sorry. That flew by. Sorry. Just one sec. Yeah. Okay. No, we're good. What time's the game in Cole Harbor? Not till later. Okay. Doing the rage game. Oh yeah. No, Hunter. Oh, Hunter's game. Sorry. Hunter's game. Sorry. Where you? Where's your? Oh, I had a great question lined up. Sorry. <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> it was a good one. Yeah. No, it was great. He gave a message. No, it wasn't a question. It was a. Did you see the video of the catcher in the MLB? His first game ever as he was walking up to the the plate he did a 360 and just looked around i think he played for the giants like yeah. it was his first ever game got called up he was there and as he was walking out to the plate to do his position catcher yeah. baseball guy right now yeah. 
he just did a 360 and just like took it in. It was one of the cooler videos. You haven't seen it? I didn't see that. Oh, no, man. but that's great. Like that's right. That's what it's all about. Like sometimes you got to do that. Even at Scotiabank, you're just like, if you're starting, you kind of do a lap and you're just looking around you're like, man, like there's 10,000 people here to watch us play. But you can't be thinking like that when you're going into the game. But sometimes you kind of be like, wow, this is crazy. And then dial back in and just, it's just another game. Right? You got to look but around. You got to, you got to enjoy that stuff. Right. And just that that atmosphere of everything you got to take every everything in. that's it right 100%. enjoy every everything even like the the days that are grind and stuff you'll look back like the other day we had i think it was almost 10 hours at the rink like Still, we had one in practice workout media another practice like it was it was eight to nine hours at the rink and it's like it was a grind the boys were tired but it's like you'll remember that right you'll remember like eight to nine hours at the rink like that's what just, did you have to eat i my billets freeze meals so they're awesome. So we like in the freezer, if I know I'm like staying at the rink all day, I'll go just grab a meal, throw it in the microwave, and then we, yeah, I'm good for the day. What did, so what did the other guys eat though? We have Subway at the rink. Oh, yeah. Right? So, so they hook you guys up? Yeah. yeah. Well, we pay. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I would have thought there would have been a deal there. I know. That would be so nice. That would be so nice. But And then sometimes we'll go to eat or whatever, right? So yeah, we kind of, we just enjoy, enjoy being together. Have you had the same billets for... Four years, yeah, every yeah, every oh, year they're they're the best. What was the first night like? It was it was different because I was we were in the middle of the season. Like it wasn't it wasn't just like we were coming back from Christmas or whatever. It was like, oh, you joined on a Tuesday and we were playing that Friday. Like and it was like game whatever forty or whatever in the season. Yeah. So it was kind of just like we met them. Uh, we went out to supper with them and then we we're like, okay. And my parents like he's yours now. <laughs> there you go. Good luck. Now they're freezing you meals. Yeah, and now they're yeah they're freezing me meals. They're they're the best. So. In junior hockey, when you're on an away team, like away from where you grew up, how important is it having a stable billet that you're comfortable with going home? It's so so important, right? And I think Halifax is super fortunate for that. Um, yeah, because you have a busy day at the rink, right? There's a lot a lot going on, and sometimes mentally too, right? Like. It is obviously I want every teammate to know that I'm there if they need to talk and coaches and stuff, but like it's still you're grinding and stuff. Sometimes it's nice just to go home to your billets and be like talking about whatever happened at the rink and stuff, right? So they're they're part of the family, right? They're they're my family. It's it's awesome. Are you a guy that leaves the game at the rink or do you take it home with you sometimes, unfortunately? It depends. Like, obviously, I wish I could just yeah. leave it there. Um, That's where I think it would be uncomfortable. Like, if I'm pissed off and I got to go home to, like, not strangers, but just... I don't know. That's where I thought it would just kind of, I've never lived with billets, so I don't know. But that's kind of the, the optics I thought of it. Like, oh, I got to be this happy guy, the grateful guy. But if I'm PO'd, I don't want to... I don't know. That's, my billets know. When they I come, know. When okay. I come home and it's sometimes it's just... I literally walk through the garage and my room's right there. And you're sleeping in the garage. Uh, no, like when we walk through the oh, garage, I sleep in the basement. Okay, so I'm okay, in the okay. basement. So I just walk in the room, and then sometimes, most days, I'll go up. But if they know when I'm frustrated and stuff, I'll just I'll go to sleep. It's just kind of like they right just leave your meal outside your door. Just leave. Well, <laughs> yeah, sometimes Halifax, Halifax will feed us after games sometimes too. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, most of the times, right? That's very rare that that happens. They'll go up, and I'll be like. Yeah, rough one. We'll talk. Like we'll just kind of talk. They're great to just someone to be there for you, right? Hundred so, percent. Yeah, yeah, probably like really important when you're young too. Like you know, you'd be, you'd be in sixteen in the queue having a good billet. That's everything, right? That's sixteen. Huge. That's it's young, man. Yeah. And it's hard, like hard to get good billets too, right? Like I know Mayor Machi. It was tough. I had I had three billet brothers in Mayor Machi. No. Yeah, in one in one house. Yeah, we had so yeah four players and then the two daughters and the mom and dad. That's a lot. Two dollars. That's a lot of food. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. They got a Costco in Miramichi? No. Man. They'd have to go to Moncton for it. So no way. A lot of trips to Moncton. How far is Moncton from Miramichi? Hour and so. Not too bad. Yeah. Still, yeah. a lot of food. I've heard some horror stories. I've heard guys going to camp and then just leaving, essentially, being like, Mom, Dad, can you get me a hotel? Like, I'm not staying here. Oh, you hear like, stories about that all the time, right? So... I've been super grateful to have two fantastic billets, which are a game changer, right? I wouldn't be where I am right now without having great billets. What are some attributes that have allowed you to have a successful junior career, other than your work ethic, other than your attitude, more people that have helped you along the way? Like, what are some things that have allowed you to progress and be a 20-year-old playing for the Mooseheads? Right. It, it, obviously, like, it starts at home with my with my parents, brother, and everything like that, just kind of pushing you and keeping you on the same page right like sometimes you get in the high school age that midget year right yeah. you can kind of 
veer off. Some of your buddies are going out partying and stuff, and yeah. it's like, no, you got to you got to dial in. Yeah. Make sure you're you're staying straight on. And then when same with the billets, right? Like they they're great. It's like curfews twelve o'clock home at 12 o'clock right? right like just things like that just they it, people that like keep you accountable because it is hard to keep yourself accountable yeah 100%. for all of those years right so yeah. it's always great to have great people by your side to make sure that they keep yeah. you accountable and get you to where you want to go that's how i always feel about sid like he if you if people ever ask him about himself and his success he just right just right away he'll notice next time he interviews about himself or someone yeah. asks him a question just he'll talk about someone else yeah and how someone else helped him just it's it's crazy when you see that hockey db and it's just ramuski for two and then pittsburgh all the way down that consistency yeah. it, it, it's it's pretty unbelievable you talk about like you know details each and every day those boring details you don't want to do it's like yeah you sure you can do them for a year two years but by three four five six years in whatever it is you're still doing the same thing and he's been doing it now for 19 almost 20 years i don't know it's just crazy. and then signs that contract it's just incredible yeah. Oh, it's just, yeah. It's yeah. Just Isn't that awesome? Eight point yeah. seven stays true to it yep. the whole way. Love it. Yeah, I don't know that. Oh man, nineteen. What? <laughs> oh, McDavid guy over here. Or <laughs> do you, Sid McDavid guy? Who Who do you like? I'm a Sid. Yeah, hundred percent Sid. Now, Mc, don't get me wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. McDavid. He's probably he's the best player, right? But Sid's just he's got it all, right? He's the best all around player, I think. Sid oh, yeah. in the world, the and fat the offense. And- Everything. Three cops, hard to beat. Just a pure leader. Talk about leader. Yep. Leader. He's a leader. Yeah. So, and he'll do anything to win. Yeah. The so guy doesn't like, care about money. No, that's it. And yeah. obviously, it shows, right? A lot of people will say that, but then when the contracts roll around, what do they do? They take as much as they can. Yeah. And then here's here's your guy that he, you know, there's some people out there that said he could be getting double that right now. Oh yeah. What did right? he put up? Forty goals last year. <laughs> Something, yeah, just it, crazy. That, you know, just, I don't even want to talk about hockey, like human level specialness. Yeah. Like put hockey aside, yeah. just like a rare individual, just unbelievable to take that money. Say, yeah, maybe we can win more cups. One if, more, yeah. You know, just one more. Yeah. That's all he needs. He wants one more, even though yeah. he has three. That's what I mean, right? He's, like, right. he's good. He just loves, yeah, he just wants to win, right? And, I was furlong was he was he goes on the ice with him and he's just some of the stories. Oh, does he? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So just some sometimes like he'll go out. He said he was going out and yeah, some of the stories like he's just he's dialed in. The details are he's very focused. What do we 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 talked about details of this podcast somewhere. We said something about details or everything. Maybe it was on face offs. Face offs, film, all that fun stuff, right? Yeah. yeah you, but the thing about details is that they're boring. Super. But boring. if you can find some excitement in them, yeah, you you'll just be fine. Enjoy. You got to enjoy getting better. Really, that's the biggest thing. It's just like enjoy the journey of getting better and improving every day. And then those little details are like, you know what? This will be the difference in me getting better. So I'm just going to enjoy the journey of getting better and go through it. Yeah, it turns into gold once you can turn those details into into something that you do each and every day. I'm obsessed with Even if it's like I'm a weird guy. Like, even if it's some like I, I take one too many granola bars out of the box and like there's one that's like out of place. This is more OCD, Ace OCD. You know, it's out yeah. of place, and I walk away. I go, I got to put that granola bar back to where it belongs, and I'll walk back yeah. and I'll put it back to where it belongs. Like it, it, there's little things that I'm just kind of obsessed with that have to be perfect, right. and but it kind of translates over into other everyday life stuff. But yeah, details are hundred percent. Yeah, it's just improving a little bit every day, right? With the details and stuff like that. Like it's not like. You're not going to be perfect when you first do it, right? No. You got to, it's learning from the mistakes, seeing those little details of the mistakes you've made and improving that. And then when you keep learning from your mistakes, right? That's when, that's when the beauty happens. Hence why you like film so much. That's it, right? Yeah. So yeah, you learn, you learn every day. All right. I will let you go, but I need one more piece of, I know the advice you said, you know, for guys that, you know, you said six guys on your midget team, uh, you know, made that junior roster, but you didn't make it or something like that. You know, we, we talked about that, but then you went back to work. You said, you got to just work. You got to work. You got to work, which is a great answer. It's true. You have to work hard to get anything great in this life, but there are more hockey players out here in Atlantic Canada or wherever people are listening to this. There's more people that can relate to you rather than the guys that can relate to like the doomays of the world. So other than work, other than being a great guy, body language, smiling, all that good stuff. What are some, 
little details that you can do on a day-to-day basis to make sure that you're seen, make sure that you're making a difference on your team, um, and overall, you know, gain success in your hockey career. If you could talk to that, those kids. Yeah, for sure. I know we just touched on it, but it's really learning from mistakes. Okay. When you can learn from those mistakes, even if they're big mistakes and it might look scary, it's like, man, I, these different skills and everything like that. If you keep taking them day by day with the little details and improve on that every day, you'll have a lot of success. And also when you come to the rink and stuff, try and be prepared and ready to go. Right. We, we talk about preparation all the time. Um, sometimes we get feelings can get in the way. Oh, we're tired, long day at school, right? A lot of work and stuff like that. Put that aside. Let's dial in. Let's be focused. Want to be as prepared as possible to get better today. And if we do that every day, Hey, like that's motivation for the players, right? To, if you get a little bit better every day, you'll have tons of success. I love it. You're the man. I appreciate you coming awesome. here. Awesome. Thank you so I much. I really do. I Thanks wish you so the best much. of luck the, this year as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing my best to come to the games. Awesome. I'll be rooting you on. I might get your jersey. For sure. Let's I'd do love it. that, yeah. Do you guys get new jerseys? No, you guys got the green and yeah, the whites. Yeah. I love the greens. Yeah, with the, the new logo. So. Oh, you like, got a new logo? Not this year, but we got like... Is it going to be like a jersey reveal? No, no. We, it was two years ago. I think we got the... Like, okay. We switched the logo. Such a good color, the green. It's the best. Yeah, yeah like the yeah. brand, just yeah. money. Yeah, I'm hoping we bring back black. Remember that yes. black oh, with the stripe? Oh, I remember. Right? I remember. I, I'm hoping, yeah, talk to the owners. Yeah. Get <laughs> yeah, the owner yeah. That, Don't yeah. worry about cooling the ice. Let's just get new. Yeah, Let's exactly, get black right? jerseys yeah. in. It's all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll work on the ice later. But All right, you're yeah. the man. Awesome. I appreciate you. Thanks Everyone so much. listening, thank you very much uh, for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. Without you, we don't have jobs. So thank you for listening, clicking, liking, subscribing, anything else you guys can do. Uh, to help us along. So thank you very much. Do go to the Moosehead games. You help them out. Go cheer the boys on. All right. We're out. Peace.